Hey guys, how's it going? Mr Mitchell here. In this video we're going to go over three worked examples to show you how to do problems involving the Doppler effect. Now if you haven't already done so, check out my previous video covering the theory on this topic and that way you can apply what you learned in that video to this one. So let's get started. Question 1 says that an ambulance siren emits a sound of frequency 1200 Hz as it passes a pedestrian. Part A says to describe how the frequency of the sound heard by the observer changes as the ambulance passes. Well, we're going to split this answer into two parts where we consider the ambulance approaching the pedestrian and then the ambulance moving away from the pedestrian. So first of all, we can say that as the ambulance approaches, the frequency of the sound heard by the pedestrian increases. Whereas as the ambulance moves away, the frequency of the sound heard by the pedestrian decreases. So another way of thinking about that is you'll hear an increase in pitch when the ambulance approaches and then a decrease in the pitch when the ambulance is moving away from you. Part B says to explain in terms of wavefronts why this frequency change occurs. Well imagine our pedestrian is an old man with a dog and there's an ambulance approaching him to the left which means the left is the direction of travel. Now because the ambulance has a siren on it that means it's a moving source of sound waves. So because the, so because the source of sound waves is moving towards the pedestrian, the wave fronts at the front of the ambulance are going to bunch up and they're going to be quite close together like this. Whereas behind the ambulance, the wave fronts are going to be more spaced out, more separated and they'll look something like this. Lastly, we can mark on the wave lines for the wave fronts over this side and also the wave fronts over this side. So if we do the left hand side first, the gap between two of these wave fronts will be quite a small wavelength, whereas over on this side, the gap between any two wave fronts will be a larger wavelength. So we've got a larger wavelength for the waves behind the ambulance and a smaller wavelength for the waves in front of the ambulance. But remember, a smaller wavelength means a larger frequency. So that means the pedestrian will hear a sound that has an increased frequency. So we can say that as the ambulance approaches, more wave fronts reach the observer each second. And that means they'll observe a higher frequency in the sound waves. However, if we now consider the ambulance moving away from the pedestrian, so again, we've got our old man with a dog, and same again, our ambulance is moving to the left, and that's its direction of travel. We can then sketch on the wave fronts again, so the front of the ambulance, the wave fronts look exactly the same as before, and again we've got the wave fronts behind the ambulance which look like this, more spaced out. Now remember we've got our smaller wavelength in front of the ambulance and our larger wavelengths behind the ambulance. So remember a large wavelength will correspond to a small frequency. So now we could say that as the ambulance moves away, fewer wave fronts reach the observer each second. So that means they will observe a decrease in the frequency of the sound waves. Part C says that the ambulance is approaching the pedestrian at 35 meters per second. Calculate the frequency of the sound heard by the pedestrian. Well, firstly, we need to identify from the question that the ambulance is moving towards the observer. So we're going to use the equation for the Doppler effect that has a negative sign in the denominator. So writing down what we know from the question, we're trying to find FO, the frequency of the observer. We know that FS, the frequency of the source, is 1200 Hz. We know that V, the speed of sound, is 340 meters per second, and the speed of the source V is 35 meters per second. So writing down our equation with the negative sign in the denominator, we have FO equals FS times V over V minus VS. Substituting in the numbers gives us 1200 times 340 divided by 340 minus 35. Putting that into your calculator should give you an answer of 1338 Hz. Question 2 says that a police car travelling at 20 meters per second emits sound with a frequency of 2000 Hz. Find the frequency heard by a stationary observer as the police car in part A moves towards them. Well, we can firstly identify that the ambulance is moving towards the observer, so just like in question 1c, we're going to use the equation with a negative sign in the denominator. So writing down what we know from the question, FO is what we're trying to find, FS is 2000 Hz. V is 340 meters per second as always, Vs is 20 meters per second, and writing down our equation, we have FO equals Fs times V over V minus Vs. Substituting in the numbers now gives us 2000 times 340 over 340 minus 20, and if you put that into your calculator you should get an answer of 2125 hertz. And a quick check is to see that this frequency is larger than the source frequency, which it should be because the observer should be observing an increase in frequency because the ambulance is moving towards them. In part B, we have to find the frequency heard by the station observer as the police car moves away from them. So we can write down first of all that the ambulance is moving away from the observer, so we use the equation with a plus sign in the denominator. So this is the opposite case to part A. The frequency of the observer is what we're trying to find. The frequency of the source is 2000 Hz. 
speed of sound is 340 meters per second, and the speed of the source is 20 meters per second. So writing down our equation, this time with the positive sign in the denominator, we get FO equals FS times V over V plus VS. Substituting in the numbers gives us 2000 times 340 over 340 plus 20. Put all that into your calculator and you should get an answer of 1889 hertz. A quick check is to see that this value should be lower than the source frequency, which it is. Lastly, question 3 says that a Formula 1 car's engine produces noise with a frequency of 800 hertz when stationary. A spectator measures the frequency of the engine noise to be 915 hertz as the car approaches. Calculate the speed of the car. Well, firstly, we can identify that the ambulance is moving towards the observer, so we use the equation with a negative sign in the denominator. Writing down what we know from the question, we're trying to find the Vs, the speed of the source. We know that the frequency of the observer, FO, is 915 Hz, and the frequency of the source is 800 Hz. The speed of sound is 340 meters per second, as always. So writing down our equation with a negative sign in the denominator, we have FO equals Fs times V over V minus Vs. Substituting in our numbers gives us 915 equals 800 times 340 over 340 minus Vs. And now to get Vs on its own, we need to manipulate a few things here. So firstly, we can do 800 times 340 to get a simplified numerator in this fraction, which gives us 915 equals 272,000 divided by 340 minus Vs. And now it's already looking a bit simpler, but if we want the term with Vs on it to be up here instead on the left-hand side, then we're going to cross multiply. So to cross multiply, we can actually just swap this thing in the top with this thing in the bottom. So we just swap these and we end up with 340 minus Vs equals the 272,000 over 915. And if you put that bit into your calculator, you should get 297.27. So now what we need to do to get a positive Vs is add Vs to both sides. And if we do that and then swap it over to the left hand side, we end up with Vs equals 43 meters per second. That's all for this video folks, thanks for watching, if you made it to the end I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a like, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.